Hello and welcome to the Climbing Daily Wednesday News Show. Now, Hugo isn't here this week, but that's not going to stop us because we've got a packed show, including an awful lot of activity with the 9B counter. So winter is here and things are already kicking off in Scotland after some early snow in October. Greg Boswell and Guy Robertson have made the first ascent of a new route called the Forge in the Scottish Highlands. The route has two pitches of 40 to 45 metres and is extremely technical and difficult with huge fall potential. Greg climbed the first pitch in an epic four hour effort with Guy tackling the roof above. They've graded the climb 10-10. So an amazing start to the season. Greg Boswell has been one of my heroes for so long. I love how much training he puts in during the off-season. Endless pull-ups and he works as a farmer, so he's lifting hay bales. And So when winter comes, he is just ready to get out there and absolutely crush. So a good sign of things to come. Now, Sonny Trotter has put up a new variant of a route on El Cap called the Pineapple Express, and he climbed it with his mate, Tommy Caldwell. The route is on the North American Wall. The original free line was called El Nino and involved an eight metre rappel to avoid a blank section. Sonny Trotter's new route finds a way past this blank section, which takes a more direct line up the black dihedrals. Sonny Trotter and Tommy Caldwell climbed it in a single 13 hour push. It's a great effort from Sonny Trotter there and things are kind of kicking off in Yosemite at the moment. Adam Ondra was there uh, with his attempted on-site at the Salathe Wall. Nina Caprez, she's back trying to free that route. So everyone is kind of there crushing at the moment and conditions are coming in. So hopefully we're going to see more ascends in the next couple of weeks. Now from big walls to bouldering, I don't know why I did such an exaggerated hand movement there, but Michelle Kirsch has climbed three 8A plus boulders in Hueco tanks in America. Tequila. Michelle climbed Rumble in the Jungle, Tequila Sunrise and Phantom Limb. And this sending spree means she's ranked number one on the 8A.NU in the combined ranking game. Awesome, awesome effort there. I, I always say it actually, but I have never been to Hueco Tanks and I would absolutely love to boulder there. It looks incredible, the rock is beautiful. So if anyone could hook me up with a plane ticket uh, and a place to stay and spending money and free food and a bouldering pad, then I will come and visit you. Now from one woman crushing to another, it's good to see British climber Molly Thompson-Smith back in the game after a horrible finger injury last December. Last December, Molly fully ruptured one of her pulleys and required surgery. She's back climbing her first 8C, La Fabelita, in Santa Linea, Spain. Molly sent the route quickly and managed it on a perfect cold sunny day. If you haven't seen the Epic TV interview we did with Molly uh, like back in March, I think it was, do check it out and I'll stick the link in the description below because she was talking about coming back from this injury. Uh, she had a very, very short competition season, did pretty well in Innsbruck considering she was on the bounce back. And this route now sort of signals her return uh, to hard climbing. She said on her Instagram that it's good to climb outside and not really think about that finger anymore. So great effort, Molly, and good luck with the competition season to come. Now, Epic TV athlete Stefano Gasolfi has climbed his long-term 9B plus project, Perfecto Mundo in Margalef, Spain. Perfecto Mundo is one of only a handful of 9B plus routes in the world, and currently only silent in flat hanger is considered harder. Stefano spent 32 days trying the route, constantly falling off the incredible difficult pinch move. With this send, Stefano becomes only the fourth person to climb 9B plus, alongside Adam Ondra, Chris Sharma, and Alexander Magos. So with news of that climb and the fact that I've got my blue pen with me, it's on to the 9B counter. <laughs> So here we go, uh, and there's quite a bit of action to go through with the 9B counter this week. Finally, finally, people. Okay, so let's first of all deal with last week's question, which was, should Jakob Schubert's uh, climb of El, uh, El Bon Combat count for the counter? Now, there was a lot of controversy. I think it should have been on the counter. Hugo thought it shouldn't have been on the counter. So we put the vote to you guys, uh, and using my very scientific blue book here, the votes on YouTube were as follows. Yes for 9B counter, 20 votes. No for 9B counter, 29 votes. So the people have sort of 
spoken on this one saying it shouldn't have been on the 9B counter. But I said I'd get hold of Chris. I emailed him and he responded and this was his response. I'll read it verbatim. He says, right on man. I think Jakob is strong right now. Sorry. I think Jakob is so strong right now that he might not be the best judge. So it'd be cool to see what others think. Basically, Chris Sharma seems to be on the fence on this one. Um, I, I think what, he, what he's basically saying is, look, Jakob's come off an amazing season. He's super strong. He may be climbing way better than even he thinks he is, and therefore things are feeling easier. So he's sort of implying that perhaps other people need to climb it to confirm a grade either way. So that being said, with the people's vote, with Chris's opinion, we're not going to include Jakob on the 9B counter yet. If that route gets climbed subsequently and gets the 9B tick, he's going on there. But for the time being, for 2018, unless it gets done very soon, no Jakob. I'm gutted. But moving on, Stefano Gasolfi. We discussed the 9B, 9B plus debate in a previous argument. We decided that 9B pluses were allowed. So Stefano Gasolfi is getting a tick on the 9B counter, finally. And that means that he is sharing the 9B counter lead with Adam Ondra, who is also on two. And I'm gonna change the green tick to a blue tick because someone was saying that you can't really see it very well. So there you go. Stefano Gasolfi, Adam Ondra, leading the way at the moment. There is not long left of 2018, people. So climbers of the world, if you wanna beat these guys, get a move on. <laughs>So with winter here, the UIAA, it's hard to say, Ice Climbing World Championships and World Cups have returned. Now last year we did a bunch of stuff with them. For example, we went to Ulu, minus 27 if you remember that. And this year we're going even more overboard. We're going to go to the events, we're going to interview the athletes, we're going to interview the organisers. And on the new show we're going to discuss it in the same way as we discuss the IFSC. Now this weekend, uh, the Combined World Championships kicks off in Moscow. It's gonna be on the Epic TV website, embedded with the live stream. It's gonna be on our Facebook pages. So if you're into ice climbing, or if you've never done ice climbing and you wanna know what it's all about, then do check it out. It's something I absolutely love and I can't wait to cover. Anything can really happen. You get one shot. It's the excitement, the pace, the way that something can be so tenuous yet so positive, the movement is super athletic. Barely fit body, lots of endurance, but I think you need a really good mindset. Every competition is different, every structure is different, every route is different. It's really cool, like nothing you've done. Okay, so let's talk about media on the website and the feature film that's on there at the moment is the La Sportiva Living Legends movie that was created by Hugo Pilcher and the talented cameraman Matafi, uh, who are all part of the Epic TV team. We do this series every year, we follow different athletes, different stories, and this year it's the turn of Neil Gresham. Here's a little teaser. <laughs> As a young climber, I never dreamt that I could make a living from the sport. I guess the mistake I made was comparing myself to the top sport climbers and realising that I'd never make the pace. Yet sport climbing has always been my weakest discipline and it all started to happen for me when I forgot about keeping up with the pack and moved back into trad. It's a really cool little movie. I know Neil a bit and I know just how dedicated he is to putting up those unclimbed lines, to, to scouting things out that other people don't see. So it's great to see him featured in a big movie like that. So nice one. Check it out if you haven't before. The link is in the description below as well always. Now, Climbing Daily this week, we had Alex Magos's uh, incredible run at the Las Cortiva Legends only competition. Uh, basically, he turned up and beat everyone else into submission. And we've got the full highlights reel on our sister show, Relay Vertical, and we did a sort of mini highlight reel just looking at Alex Magos's run on Monday. So if you haven't seen it, 
Here's a little look at that. Okay, so shop deals. Uh, Christmas is very, very close. Something that I didn't realize until the other day. Mum, I still haven't got you a present. I'm really sorry. It's coming. I've just got to think about what it is first. But if you're looking to buy climbing gear, today might be a good option. So this show is now Wednesday. Uh, for a couple more hours, we've got a discount code, which is, and I'm gonna read this out for you, Xmas 10. If you type that in uh, to your order, you will get a 10% discount on all things, excluding certain brands, including La Sportiva, Scarpa and Petzl. But have a look on the shop, all the T's and C's are on there, and it's a great way to grab that quick bargain. Now, talking about bargains, uh, the La Sportiva Testarossa is an incredible price, and I did a funny little movie about it. It's Christmas, nearly. So here's some gift ideas. This is the La Sportiva Testarossa. It's downturned and aggressive for your hardest sport climbs and bouldering projects. It features a super soft midsole and Vibram XS Grip 2 rubber, so it means you can hook your toes around small edges and blend heel hooks to your will. It also has a P3 rand, which keeps it downturned for longer. It's only 119 euros on the Epic TV shop, and it looks like a Ferrari. Enough said. Full enthusiasm there, as you can see, but it's Christmas. I mean, we've got, we've got, we've got to put effort here, people. So that's it. I think we're done for the show. The 9B counter has been ticked. Uh, the news has been discussed. The media has been talked. Hugo's not here. He'll be here next week. So thank you so, so much for watching. Have an amazing week, and I'll talk to you soon.